Hey everyone, and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be talking about Commerce on Core, and we're going to be specifically talking about parent products, uh, and a little bit about the different types of products in Salesforce with uh, Commerce on Core, meaning B2B and D2C commerce. Now, up to this point, I believe we've hinted at parent products just a little bit, uh, and we've definitely configured a couple of simple products, but I wanted to go a little bit further into the depth of what this actually means. So a simple product is what it means. It's simply a product. It is a single level. This is where you apply categories, entitlements, the price book entries, all the details about the products, and that's what shows up on the storefront. And when you go to the product detail page, you can simply view that information and click add to cart or add to list. And it's really that easy. However, some businesses have more complex products. And that's really when we get into parent products. Now, the definition of parent products in my mind is being able to have a parent product and children product. And what this gives you the ability to do in the storefront is the ability to go to the product, the parent product page, and that parent product page will have a drop down. And let's say that we're selling t-shirts, your drop down may be size. And I want to be able to choose between small, medium, and large. Um, and for more complex businesses, you may have uh, width or type or you know maybe two, three, or four different types of uh, selectors. And the combination of those selections you make determines what child product you're trying to buy. Um, so if I were to select this small product, I'm not just buying a t-shirt, but I'm buying a medium t-shirt. But let's say that we add a additional use case on top of it and say we're doing size and color now. The combination between medium and a blue t-shirt determines which child product you're trying to purchase. So parent products are not quite as simple to set up. So I wanted to take some time for us to go through do the configuration to actually get everything in place and then go through actually setting up a new parent product. So let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are back in our Salesforce Mojo org and we're under the product workspace uh, where it is empty right now. If we go over to the right hand side here, you can see that there's a lot of different options we can do to actually create a new product. If we were to simply add this add button right here, this would give us the pop-up modal to just simply add a normal, simple product. So it's really important that if you're manually adding these parent products, that you don't go to this screen because this screen uh, is not going to give you what you need. And once you create a simple product, it's very difficult to move it over to a parent product. And it's impossible in the UI. You have to do it through uh, data in the back end. Okay, so going back over here, if we go down this drop down again and we look at the very bottom, it says create variation parent. So we're going to click that. You can see that this gives you a slightly different screen here. First thing it asks you for is your product attribute set. And you can see in our instance, we don't have any attribute sets created. So that's going to be the next thing we do is we need to go create those attribute sets. And that attribute set is essentially the selections that can be made for this specific parent product. And you can have multiple of these attributes set. You may have a single attribute set that you only allow size. You may have another one that's a size color combination and a third one that's another variation of that three or four um, selections. Now let's actually go over into our store. And uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll hop into commerce setup. And if you don't see commerce setup in this drop down right here, you may have to go to your profile and actually turn this tab on. Uh, it's typically not on by default, so it's a quick little setup item there, but if you don't see it, that's how you would actually go and do that. So once we click this, it's gonna give us a couple different things we can do, like installing reports, which we're not gonna cover here right now, but now you know, there. Uh, but we're gonna go underneath product variation, and we'll start with variation guide setup here. Um, so this is a, a couple of quick, nice, easy links you can go to and uh, make sure this is all set up correctly. But we'll go over to setup and the first thing we need to do is create a new field. And from here, this is actually where we're going to configure the fields that we'll use to actually be our attributes. So I mentioned size earlier. Let's go ahead and click size. One thing I do want to mention and it actually says it on the previous screen here is that it needs to be the pick list type. So that's really important. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. So we'll come here and we'll click 
uh, pick list field and we're going to name this size and for the sake of simplicity today we're going to do small medium and large and we're going to save this I want to make sure that this is visible to our community user and our system admin user and I believe in this case we're using uh, one of these so I'm just going to select all of them for now and click save okay so now we have the size on here we can go back over to our other tab here and if you want to you can kind of click these checkboxes so you you know make sure you know what's what's going on here they're not required but it's kind of helpful to, to know uh, the first time you walk through this uh, so the next thing that we will do is we need to actually create a attribute uh, set um, and so what you can do is you can click this link right here which will actually jump you down to this tab over here and this is where we'll come in and we'll give this a name this is just a size attribute set and we're just selecting this field right here um, and we're actually going to uh, click save there and now we have a variation attribute set uh, for just one of these so now let's actually let's do both of these scenarios at once before we go and start creating some products the next scenario would be what if I have two selections I want on the screen I want size and color at the same time well if you go back over here um, you can go back to your setup and you're going to create a new field I already have this tab open here so I'll come over here and do another pick list field and we will call this color and we'll just do blue and black for right now So now that we have two fields available to us, I can go back over to my variation attribute set and I'm gonna create a separate variation attribute set. And this one I'm going to call size color, uh, which basically means it's a combination of the two of those. Um, and we can select those. I want size to be first so I can configure that right there and click save. And now I have two different variation sets that are available to me. So now that we have those, we can go back to our product workspace and the next thing we're going to do is remember to click the drop down here, click the creation variation parent, and now I can type in size and I should be able to see my two attribute sets that I just created a couple moments ago. Uh, let's start with a, an easier one, which is just size. I want this to be uh, just a single size. There's no color combination here and we're going to we're gonna break our uh, we're gonna break our tiny home theme here just for a moment because we're kind of talking about this complex thing. I know tiny homes were we're doing doors and windows and all the other things that we're we're selling, uh, which we'll get back to uh, in a little bit here. But uh, let's say we also sell shirts, just to kind of follow the example that I've kind of outlined, um, and it's all about you know supporting the tiny homes brand. So we're just gonna do shirts here and uh, give it a product code market is active and click save and once that uh, variation uh, parent has been created here uh, you can see that it looks very similar to every other type of product uh, as I mentioned uh, back kind of the intro here you do need to do a couple specific things on this parent product uh, such as uh, categories and entitlements and then you'll do the entitlements and pricing again down at the individual child level but before we do that, let's actually go to variations here. And you can see that right now we don't have any variations, uh, but we can create a new variation from this screen. So what this is going to do is it's going to create another product record associated to this parent product record. So they actually are two different product records. We're gonna choose a size and a sequence, meaning you know what the selection order should be for that. And you do need to make sure that you have a different product code. So if I were to try to save this right now, it's actually going to let me save it. And what I meant by product code is it needs a different product SKU, which uh, for some reason wasn't showing up on that screen here because we need to do a bit of product uh, layout work and object work. So let's go do that real quick. Uh, this should be relatively um, straightforward for those of you who are working in Salesforce quite frequently here, but we're going to come in and we're going to throw in SKU and we're also going to go down to the related list and we're going to throw in the commerce entitlements, the categories, 
and that should be sufficient for what we need here. So let's go back over here now and we'll refresh this. And uh, we're going to make an update to the parent here. So the parent should be shirt uh, and the variation underneath it. You can see it opens up a separate uh, item here. And we're actually gonna call this uh, shirt small and it will be the same code uh, normally with like a, a dash s or something to be uh, to make sure it's it's unique there uh, so now that we have that updated this will look a little bit uh, cleaner here and now we can create another variation uh, which would be shirt uh, medium and m and we'll choose medium up here sequence order of two and click save and now you can see that we have the main product, which is shirts. So shirts is what's going to show up in the product list page. Uh, and then you'll be able to uh, give uh, a small and medium selection option on that page. Uh, it is important that we configure our categories, price books, and entitlements correctly here. So if we go to categories, we wanna make sure we set up our category uh, at the parent level. And then we'll go to our entitlements and we'll need a set of entitlements for the parent level because we want to make sure people have access to see that parent product level otherwise they won't be able to see the children um, and then down below this is where it gets a little bit nuanced here you can give specific buyer groups access to specific options so let's say you only want certain buyer groups to be able to see the small option but other ones to be able to see small and medium you can do that simply by configuring the entitlements we had talked about previously um, so you can click that right there and now we've set that up in our instance we're only doing one that's super straightforward um, but we you can kind of get the, the picture there with that so we're going to put in uh, a standard price book and we're going to put in the uh, tiny homes price book and that should fully configure that one little uh, nice quick click here if you're interested is if you click this link right here it will take you back to the parent product. Um, so this will show you on the right hand side which parent product uh, this child product is associated with. Now let's go through one more situation here so we can use our other attribute set. We're going to create a new variation parent and we're going to use the size width, or sorry, size color uh, uh, actually. And we're gonna call this shirt color, just meaning that this shirt can have color options. Uh, and we'll do the same thing for this product SKU and active and save. And we're gonna do the same thing down in variations as we'll click uh, variations, but you can see this time it's giving us two drop downs that we need to fill in. So for every variation child, there needs to be both of these selected. So small black, and you can start to see where this can start to spiral into very complex product attributes and product data. Uh, so in this situation, we need to call this small and blue, uh, and we'll click save here, but then we'll do another combination, which is small and black. Uh, and you can see that, you know, in this case, we have small, but we need to like be able to, to distinguish it. So for every attribute you add into this variation capability, it exponentially increases the number of child products that are available to be selected. And again, you can split them up so that different buyers can see them or not, uh, but you really wanna think through how you want to use attributes uh, so that on the storefront, a person doesn't have you know 300 options, right? A little bit of an exaggeration there, but you get the idea is that you need to be able to kind of balance how you're using these attributes. So hopefully that was a, a good overview for everyone on parent variations. Uh, the next video I think we're gonna do is all about product importing and being able to import uh, simple products and parent products, but I needed to be able to kind of set the foundation of you know what is a parent product and why is it so complex before we go straight into uh, being able to import those through the UI or through other means. Uh, so hopefully everyone enjoyed this. 